All right, guys. Today I'm going to show you how to install Boost on your machine. So what I'm going to do right now is, in order to download Boost, if you just Google for Lib Boost, it will take you to Boost's homepage. If you go to their homepage, they have a download site. If you click on download, you will see that you can get the latest version of Boost right from this website. Now, we are currently on Windows. If you are on Linux, you can say, if you're like on a Debian distribution like Ubuntu, you could say sudo apt install libboost dev and it will install for you. If you need the latest version, you can download and install the source right here. Now, on Windows, we will go to the pre-built Windows binaries. This will take us to a SourceForge website showing the latest version of 1.72. If I go into 1.72, we want to get the very latest version for the very latest Microsoft Visual Studio compiler. All right, that will be MSVC 14.2 x64. All right, 64 means it's the 64-bit version of the libraries, you know, the pre-built binaries we're going to download. In version 14.2 is actually what internally Microsoft Visual Studio calls Microsoft Visual Studio 2019. All right, so when you go and you download the latest version of MSVC 2019 Community Edition, it is actually using version 14.2 of the MSVC compiler, obviously. So what I can do right here is I have downloaded that uh, archive. It's 174 megs. I can choose to extract it. I will choose to extract it right into... Um, C colon repos libs boost 172. All right. Um, I just do that because I put all of my libraries into repos libs. Like I'll put OpenCV there, uh, boost, um, any other main library that I may put in there that I'm building from source will go there. Um, anyway, I'll start extracting that. We can see that the folder is being extracted. Now, while that is being extracted, there are three environment variables that I need to set. All right. If I do not set these three environment variables on my system, when I run CMake to try to build the engine, Boost will not be found and I will get errors. So while Boost is extracting, because it takes a little bit of time, let's reproduce the error that I would expect you to see if this is not done properly. So if I go into the engine, and I run this bat file, I will begin to run Visual Studio, and it will find the compiler, and it will then begin searching for all the installed libraries, such as Boost. And it's going to be sort of hard to see. It was searching for Boost in here. And if we click... Um, uh, configure, well, we can see right here that it said that it could not find Boost, but if we click Configure, which reproduces the whole um, output, actually all of the output that you see right here is the exact same output that you saw from the command window that was just too quick to read. But if we scroll up and we look, we can see right here that it is looking in my environment it's looking in the boost root, in the boost include dir, and the boost library dir, and it's looking for all of these potential different versions of boost, all right? And if we scroll down and we can see it keeps searching, searching, and then at the end it said that it couldn't find any boost at all, okay? So if we, if we try to generate without finding boost, we're going to get an error in the generation process, and we will see that inside of our C164 folder, the solution file that is created will not work properly. All right, so this is our first hint that it will not work right. So trying to open up and build this solution file will be a waste of your time because, well, let's actually open it up and see. All right, it's going to say things like boost not found cannot include some boost header file. Okay, so if this guy opens up and we try to compile, 
here we will try to install the, or I'm sorry, install the min size rel and click build. Very shortly after we begin compilation, we will begin to see a large cascade of compiler errors. Oh, here we go. So right here, uh, inside of our after frame capture, it cannot include boost algorithm string predicate. All right, here it can't include some matrix stuff. Here it can include boost timer. So this will give lots and lots of fatal errors. This process is just worth aborting. We will be able to go back to our C164 folder, uh, and we might as well just delete it. But in the meantime, we have finished installing Boost, and we will now set up our environment path to configure it. So in our repos, we have a folder called libs. This Boost172 is the new folder that we just created. All right. Right here, this is the path to the root of Boost. So if I go into my environment variables, and I just hit the Windows key typed ENV, and went to Edit System Environment, I can click on Environment Variables. I can create a new value, and again, the three values that I need to create will be Boost Root. So Boost Root, and the Boost Root directory will be right here. The next directory that I need to create will be Boost Includer, and Boost Includer is actually going to be exactly the same as the boost root. All right, not too complicated. Then the last thing I need is the boost library dir. Now, again, if we look, the boost include dir points right here because whenever I try to include something using boost, I say pound include boost slash asio.h. Okay? When I say boost slash, it's literally talking about this folder right here, boost. So if I go into boost, here's our ASIO.h right there. All right? And if I try to say earlier we saw that there was a string predicate or a predicate string or something, whatever, whatever that compiler error was, it was because it couldn't find one of the header files in this folder. All right? Now, for the library, what the library wants to look at are statically built libs. Those libs, the binaries, the binary compilation is in this lib64 folder. And if you look right here, these are all of the libs that we statically link to when we compile the engine. The DLLs can be placed in your path so that at runtime those DLLs can be found. Okay, on Windows they're called DLLs, on Linux they are called .SOs, on OS X they are going to be called dilibs. All right? So, this path right here is the library path. So if we go back, I can now make one more file called, or one more entry called boost library dir. Paste that in there, press OK, press OK. And just to verify, these three are all here. I can hit OK, I will hit OK. Now, I will rerun the script, the CMake uh, bat file, and at this point, I expect to observe hopefully better behavior. Oop. And before we do that, let me pause this real quick. I just hit Control-C and canceled that out. I want to again show you I will delete the CWIN64 folder completely. So any junk that was in there has now been deleted, and we are starting from scratch. So if we look really quickly, we may be able to see in this DOS window that it found boost. But again, that's very, very quick. We can see here that we now have boost being found. We see the boost includer and the boost library. If we click configure, we now see that if we scroll up, we don't have any of those problems. We found the boost includer right here. All right, so we have the boost include and the boost library, and it shows, oh, when we try to compile boost, we will link against the boost libraries at these locations. So if I use the regular expression library in boost, which I don't need to because now the standard library has pound include regex, but if I use something different such as the... Um, 
ASIO, the networking library, you'll see that all of those libraries are just literally being linked right in. Now these are the 64-bit version. The GD means that it's debug, but not all of them right here. This MT means multi-threaded. Um, so right here, this is the non-debug X64-bit version of the 172 version of the Boost Timer library. Okay. So anyway, it's going to link against a lot of those because that's all of Boost. We can uh, click Generate, and what that does is it creates our solution file. If we open up our solution file, we can now begin to compile the release version uh, or the min size rel version on the install build target. So I can say, let's build. We'll go to batch build, and I will choose to build the install. All right, we hit build, and at this point, we will observe that this compilation will hopefully successfully complete. Okay. And now you can see we've already made it further than we did during our last compilation. And that is because our environment properly found the boost libraries as indicated in the output of the CMake script right here. Okay? So when you run CMake, this output window is a great tool showing you what was and was not found. Now this little red text right here is just basically because it had a little trouble finding SDL2 image, but I actually in my own CMake script provide a few more hints about where SDL image actually is inside of the repo, and that's why it did successfully find it and found this right here. Uh, in this new red text is actually a function of CMake 3.17, and it wasn't there in earlier versions. So because this is a brand new version of CMake I just installed, uh, this is a new set of red text, nothing, nothing too big to worry about. Uh, but in general, any other library that you are trying to compile, CMake is basically the most ubiquitous cross-platform uh, build system for C++, you will probably be running into um, CMake things that it would be a benefit for you to become accustomed to. All right. And we should be finishing up on the compilation right here. Yep, these are the last sets of files. It should now be installing. And here it goes. So it has now done the install script, and copied all of the files over. And we can see that one of the files that it installed is a file that has changed. The file that has changed is aftrconfig.h. All right, that changed because we're using a new version of Boost. And then the other ones that would have changed would have been the actual lib itself. And so if we get to the top of these header files here, it will have right here, it created this AFTR burner engine.lib, and that is the file that is sitting in the lib64 version of the engine. We can see right here, this 38.1 megabyte file was just created. If I search by date modified, we can see that it was just created one minute ago. All right. But we can see that with the install, it says the install script, it installed the aftertargets.cmake, the aftertargets for the min size rel.cmake, and most importantly, repos, aburn user lib64 afterburner engine.lib. Okay? So if we look, this was modified at 10.09 p.m. If I go into the user folder and I look at the lib64, Again, I should see the exact same file modified at the exact same time. And that's because it compiled in the engine. We statically linked all that source code into one big lib. All right. And in fact, the dot lib is actually just a concatenation of dot obj files. On Linux, there's actually a tool called AR. And you can literally take the dot 
O or the object files that are produced from compiling a CPP concatenate all of those .o files together with the AR tool and call it a .lib file because that's exactly what a .lib file is. It's literally a concatenation of binary files. So suffice to say, we compiled and built the .lib into the engine, and then the CMake install script copied that lib from the engine lib64 to user lib64. Whenever you are inside of the user folder, such as inside of modules, it will use or try to link against the user slash lib64. All right, and it will include against user include. So when you say pound include wo.h, it is literally pound including the wo.h inside of user include after. All right. Um, that completes the objectives of this video, which again were installing Boost, setting up the environment for Boost, and then compiling the engine. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.